Hey everybody, so this is Sam over at the Foot Whisperer Reflexology Institute. Apparently 1 o'clock means 102 to Cody, so we're starting just a few minutes late. Uh, he's waving on the table, um, but just doing a second round of our live demo for you guys so you guys can see what it is a full 60 minute foot reflexology technique routine looks like and just like we did with the certification program video we'll be talking during it so that you guys can uh have questions answered and we can kind of go over the basics as we work because just watching somebody get their feet rubbed for a little bit can be kind of boring so we want to spice it up okay do, do, do. Here we go. So first things first, solar plexus adrenal. And all of these individual techniques you can definitely see on our Foot Whisperer YouTube channel. So check that out if you miss anything and we'll be posting this video up there as well. As you can see, Cody's second toes are curled in and he has some peeling still left from his Friends injury. Oh, would you look at that? And some yellowing of callusing, getting a little jaundiced in the thoughts. All of that loveliness. Care to comment? Um, as we go along. As we go along. There you go. The story shall unfold, everyone. So we're giving it about 30 seconds and then switching to the adrenal reflex. Actually, on the note of yellow and jaundice, mm -hmm. what's that a general sign for? So, if we look at the toes and the coloring, if we see any toes specifically that have callusing that turns yellow, callusing is protective tendencies, but it's hardness in the tissues. But then when it starts to get yellow in hue, when any callusing anywhere starts to get yellow in hue, it starts to give you that mental emotional feeling of what Jane calls being cheesed off or pissed off. It's basically the liver isn't processing um, and your energetic kind of self isn't processing the stress. So it starts to turn yellow in that area as a sign of things getting a little bit backed up. In, on the face, uh, the nose area corresponds with the liver? So. Um, it, the nose on the right side specifically is the gallbladder duct and then right side is gallbladder duct, left side is uh, stomach esophagus. So it depends on kind of where you're looking at on the nose. Okay. Because I had some corresponding, like a zit in that area. So when you mentioned liver, that's what it made me Oh, gotcha. Cool. But yeah, that's like, especially when you get zits like in and around the nose, it's almost always digestive related. Um, sides of the mouth are always kidneys. So everything is significant, people. Getting our hot towel wrapping going on. Pressing all that delicious heat. Let me go to the other side. Did you see that you're starting to get the peeling on the other toe too? Um, a little bit. The, the other big toe? Yeah. Wow. I know. It's definitely carrying over. Actually, I didn't notice that, to be honest. I'm glad you told me. It's good stuff, though. Is there it? was there was one point when I was really struggling with my my practice and kind of where to take it, and um, I was actually struggling with a lot of the reading aspects and how to convey that without kind of pissing off my clients, but also really kind of conveying it accurately instead of just by the book. And there was about a six month period where I had this flap of skin on my big toe that just would not stop ripping open. And it was really painful and super irritating, but it's just no matter how many band-aids I put on it, I just always found a way to rip it open. Okay. And it was kind of at a time of that, that really mental turnover state. That makes sense. But it's, you know, peeling is good. It's just when things continue to peel over and over and over and they don't stop. It's like the body's trying to get rid of stuff that it can't and so is the, the mind and the emotions. So just as a reminder for everybody watching, once we finish our second hot towel, we're going to 
wrap in the dry towel, but we're going to keep it wrapped and then let the fleece stay over it wrapped so that we complete the entire routine on one side. And that really makes sure that the foot that we're not working on keeps warm, keeps dry, and the person feels comfortable on the table instead of it kind of like flapping in the wind. Okay. And relaxation techniques. This is such a great one because I can feel the jostling all the way up to my face. It's really fantastic. Yeah. All of these techniques, you know, reflexology is truly a full body modality. So when we engage in any of the relaxation techniques, they look like fluff, but they're really not. Like they, they all address the entire body through the nerve endings. Into that push pull. for that knuckle roll. We're stopping just below the bunion area. We're only addressing that meat of the arch because it wouldn't feel good if we were bone on bone. Get a little bit extra cream and then we start our spinal walk which is just all the way up the spine and I keep my hand outside for leverage. What's with this nasty scar? That, um, that was in early college I was wade fishing in salt water and I stepped on an oyster I've noticed it before but for some reason it seems much more prominent today did you recently talk with somebody from college um, yeah, I've been talking to several people, actually. Actually, that's funny, last night, or yesterday, I had lunch with my grandfather, and he was asking about all my old friends that, you know, he knows from college, high school, even grade school, and so I was going through my, through my mind and the memory and kind of reliving old stories with him, so... Certainly, yesterday was a lot of past being brought to the surface. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And then I bought I bought a new car yesterday as well. <laughs> well, that has nothing to do with your family and relationship scar on the on the past. <sighs> Too funny. Just walking up the toes. Sorry, you guys can't see that angle too well, but. Hopefully we'll, we'll get it better on the other side. And we'll take the hand away just so that you can see the big toe routine. Just know that I would be bracing like this, but you can't really see the technique like that. So third walk up the medial aspect of the proximal phalanx. Then we're going to switch to underneath. And again, this is sloppy, but it really shows you how small of an area we're walking right now. But all that neck reflex space so now I actually need my leverage because otherwise the toe is going to escape me and we don't want that. One, two, and with any kind of injury like I'm a I'm a rogue I'll pretty much work over anything that massage school tells you not to work on but at the same time the major concern that you want to keep in mind is pain and, you know, if this looked a little bit deeper than it is, if it seemed a little bit more sensitive, I definitely wouldn't walk it. And we're going to curl over into that lateral surface of the proximal phalanx and walk down that outside of the neck. Tiny, tiny, tiny space. On to the dorsal aspect. You can see my cream. push the foot back 
and we have much better angles of all these videos on the YouTube channel. Stomach's really growing. Mm. Well, what the hell did you eat? Or didn't you eat? I didn't. Ah. But it's a good, it's a sign of that the reflexology is working. It's yeah. a sign your body's mad at you. <laughs> So you're not gonna feed us, and then you expect us to to heal you? Yeah. <laughs> Three. By this time in the reflexology session, I would probably be in a deep relaxation, half sleep state. But I'm kind of staying conscious so I can talk to Sam and to you listening. <laughs> but just to let you know, like I, part of me wants to drop into that lovely state where I'm not really inclined to talk. Maybe I will drop in there. <laughs> but currently his stomach is mad at him, so <laughs> it probably wouldn't let him go very deep anyway. Walking down those dorsal valleys, but keeping the foot pushed back, and that pushing back of the foot is really what creates the opening on the dorsal aspect of the valleys. So we really want to make sure that your form is appropriate. Oh, I started an Instagram account. Nice. Started commenting on everybody who posted on foot reading, posting pictures of their feet. Oh, that's brilliant. I must have commented on like three different people who had the mark of the overthinker. <laughs> shake out those metatarsals one more time then we'll move to the ball of the foot hello to my people watching okay so normally I would grip it like this but I just want you to see the technique always making sure to check your leverage because your leverage is really what saves your hands at the end of the day and you can really see how tight my uh my alignment is. I'm really conscientious of not overextending my thumb, really using my grip in order to provide that stability. Also for the client, you know, when you don't feel comfortable with the technique, chances are the client doesn't feel comfortable with the technique. So you really want to make sure that above all else, you uh, definitely are providing that leverage and support. Thanks, Bev. I appreciate your comment. She loves watching our videos. She says she learns so much from our videos. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, sorry. Blocking the camera angle for you guys. One, two. And the whole premise here is that we're clearing the zones. So we're just clearing the nervous system pathways by walking through them multiple times. And then a lot of people think that the reflexology technique has to be super, super deep all the time, but it doesn't. This technique is just to clear the nerves, but the real depth is when we find an active reflex and we address it individually. There's some shit in here, Cody. What did you do to your shoulder? I was playing Frisbee this morning. Ah, see? Caught him. He was playing Frisbee. His shoulder reflex is inflamed. Feet don't lie, people. Okay, can you guys see that pretty good? Okay. So now we're on to the digestive reflexes. What you'll see in our YouTube video for the digestive reflexes is that we start horizontally, but we're going to stop right before that third vertical zone because we don't want to hit that plantar tendon. That plantar tendon is no bueno. It's not fun when you walk over that vertically oriented, really thick and dense tissue. Instead, we want to make sure that we're hitting the reflex, but we're working with the reflex's natural tendency. And here we have an active reflex point. Feels a little bit grainy, so we're just going to hold it. Which is totally the boring part in reflexology, but if you're able to zoom in in that palpation and you have that ability to just really be still and to observe the tissues that you're working on, then that's, that's a good thing. Okay, it's starting to let up, starting to light up underneath my grip, and we're moving on. 
for that third horizontal row, and then we're going to switch our hands and continue to walk the digestive reflexes. There we go. Better angle. And just like with the ball of the foot, now we're just clearing the zones. We're walking up each vertical zone in horizontal zone three, just to walk by the grid to make sure that we hit every surface possible so that every nerve ending gets addressed. Do you want to um, talk about kind of what level of pressure you feel I'm using? Um, well, I know sometimes we, you know, talk about on a scale of one to ten, and it feels like you're at a nice like three to four. Um, but it just feels like perfectly sufficient to um, that that like again my nerves or feel like I'm you're plugged in at the right depth, so to speak. Um, yeah, certainly zero discomfort. It's, it's very enjoyable. Okay. And uh, it's just to me, it affirms that you don't really have to strain to get deep or try to exert a lot of effort with the pressure. It just, to me, it feels just right. Oh, and we've got another spot. So what Cody's saying about pressure is that, you know, it feels like my goal, my goal is always a three to four out of 10 in pressure to both not strain you as the practitioner, but also to make sure that the person on the table isn't kicking you in the face. And that's actually something that I tell all of my clients when they walk in is that nothing I do uh, during the session should make you want to kick me in the face. And I think that a lot of reflexology practitioners right now and a lot of body workers are under the assumption that pain and effort equals effectiveness. And especially when you're dealing with nerves, it definitely does not. It's about perfect pressure, really making sure that the body is receiving the work. And then from there, making sure that you're not hurting yourself and that your work is sustainable. Do you think also the light pressure kind of draws the nervous system uh, in impulses and energy more to the surface to kind of meet literally to meet your the tactile touch? Um, that's a good question. the The thing about nerves is that everybody's nervous system is is different. So I've had clients on the table where they actually cannot stand light to medium pressure. They, they physically need deep, deep pressure. And that is where they actually relax. And it's not, it's not like a joke. It's like their nervous system is just built that way. And then there are some clients that I've had where I'm barely using a one, like I can't press. Mm. It's just kind of like a, a gentle touch. So everybody is created very different. I think that that's where that idea of perfect pressure comes into play and really customizing to the client who's on the table because they're, they're the important thing. They're the ones who are really going to determine whether or not, you know, they come back and your bank account gets full. That's the, the practicality of the modality. Oh, coin that. Practicality of the modality. <laughs> so poetic. So poetic. Okay, now we're going back to the toes. And when I was working you on, oh, sorry, working on you the other day, you, you clarified a little bit because I, I have a tendency to pull the toes, but with this, there's not really a need to pull per se. It's more of a, a wiggle. And, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I know a lot of you have experienced this when you're at a massage session and the massage therapist or the reflexologist knows that you're a reflexologist or a massage therapist. And so they try to impress you by showing you how well they can pop the toes. And that is the worst thing that you could possibly do. 
uh, it really just jars the nervous system. So with this toe technique, we are not yanking. There is a slight traction, but it's barely, barely. It's more of, like Cody said, more of a wiggle, more of a circulation. You're basically having a conversation with the bones to say, hey, you want to move around a little bit? In what direction would you like to move around? And let's move you that way. So it's, it's definitely more feedback oriented. We want to make sure that the toes themselves are treated with respect because they are the feelers of the foot. That's where, you know, anybody who stubbed their toe, it's the toes that really have the sensitivity. The rest of the foot is dull by comparison because it has a lot of muscle, bone, ligament. Instead, the toes are, are very much about keeping our balance and our sensory orientation in space. Oh, sorry, blocking you guys. Got a little bit of crunchiness in there. Two. Four. And five. Ta da! And then curl over and walk down that lateral aspect of the proximal head of the. No, the proximal phalanx. There you go. Two and three. Okay. Now we go to Cody's favorite part. The heel. Okay. We're going to stop on that inside edge and then walk up the medial surface of the calcaneus, two, and three, switch hands, lateral surface of calcaneus, three times, one, two, three, and then this is where people get tripped up, okay? So let's talk about this. Lateral malleolus, lateral malleolus, hip reflex, hip reflex, okay? So basically what we're doing is we are walking from posterior to inferior. Again, posterior to inferior. That's our little crescent-shaped groove. We're going to use our hands to push back and roll out. Push back, roll out. So each time we find a spot on that crescent, we're going to hold, push back, roll out, and then move. You see how subtle that was? Push back, roll out, and then move push back, roll out, and it creates this fluid type motion where the pressure you're exerting isn't moving, instead your outside hand creating the, the circular motion is really what's rolling the ankle onto your pressure. And that's how we do that technique. It's not complicated when you break it down, it's just like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. And we go into our lymphatic groin pump on the dorsal ankle. Is that a good explanation, Cody? Excellent. Okay. And also, like, this emphatic pump is so good because, again, I'm doing it in my upper body. It's really moving my whole body in a subtle way, very gentle, but excellent. Yes. Okay. Here's another tricky one. Cuboid notch cuboid notch. Starts at the proximal head of the fifth metatarsal, goes up, down, right at the end of the cuboid notch is where the heel starts, and then we go across. And we're just going to use a circular palpation in order to go up, down, and across the bottom of that reflex area. Super, super subtle, but this cuboid notch contains all of the reflexes for the legs and the muscles of the legs. You can watch the other YouTube video uh, for a better explanation of the cuboid notch's significance. And we got a facial itch from Cody on that one, so that's part of his restless leg syndrome thing. But uh, yeah, so cuboid notch, very, very important. Something that a lot of reflexologists overlook because they will they don't get into it as well as we do. So something to, to definitely brush up on. Ooh, you pulled a hamstring too? What was that? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of running. A lot of running. Okay, 
Let's make sure I can get that angle for the camera. Okay, so now we're onto the heel. I've lifted the heel a little bit more than I normally would during a session, just so that you all can see it. But we're horizontally walking all the way across. No plantar tendon to stop us. We can really go for miles. Okay, shifting a thumbs width down, same thing. Dose. Dress. Switch hands, and then we go vertical. Just like we did with digestive and ball of the foot, horizontal zones two, three, and four. It's just about clearing the zones at this point. And searching for those valuable reflex points that are literally the buttons that can move that that dysfunction from the body. Can you talk about like what we were talking about the other day in terms of, yes, it's one thing to go through the protocol and the routine of walking all the zones, but it's quite another to put intention into your, to your pressure and your, your making contact with the client. Right. That intentionality. So you, you have to create a feedback loop as a practitioner. And what I mean by that is when you're walking, you can't just be going through the routine. Although the routine is important, the routine just gets you from point A to point B. It's palpatory in nature. And so when your nervous system is open to your client's nervous system, there's a different quality to your work than if you were to just go through the technique alone. And what Cody and I were talking about yesterday is really making your technique very intentional and very full of that awareness to make sure that you're feeling for what's underneath the reflexes and not just trying to manipulate the reflexes because nobody likes to be manipulated. And if you're just pressing the buttons to press the buttons, then you're not intuitively hacking into the machine that is the body. And you really need to make that distinction with your work uh, from an intentional level to really know what you're doing as you're doing it and not lose touch with your touch. Perfecto. Also, a good term you've used, which is coming to mind in this session, because I'm feeling is. Uh, tapas. Oh yes, tapas. Definitely feeling that radiating from you. Yes. So when certain clients are on the table, balance is unpredictable, which is ironic. You really have no control over how the client's body is going to process the work. So what Cody's talking about is tapas in terms of his body is heating up. And that's, a, that's just one of the ways that people can find balance through reflexology, how the nervous system processes the work. And now we'll, we'll switch directions. And then I will pivot and not knock over the iPad. Here we go. Bam, check that out. Smooth transition. Okay, let's back that shit up. Okay, perfect. So back to back to what I was just saying as we repeat the entire routine on this side, um, everybody's balance is going to be different. So right now Cody is experiencing a heat in his body from the work. I know several of my clients that will have that same kind of hot flash response, you know, men and women. It's not necessarily hormone related from that standpoint. But then also I've had quite a few clients get very, very cold. Um, I've experienced that, you know, regardless of if the AC is on or not, the body just goes cold. Uh, and then sometimes, you know, we've talked about this in other videos, the twitches, uh, the muscle spasms, the breathing changes, but also, you know, sometimes 
like I've experienced this during a session where all of the water in my body just goes straight to my bladder, like the body chooses to flush its water systems. Um, everybody's response is going to be different, and sometimes the response can be different from session to session. It's very unique to the individual, but you always want to respect that process in terms of how the nervous system is processing the work that you're doing on the table. Okay. Then we do our knuckle roll into the arch. You can really see that going well. Two, three. And we are walking into the meat of the arch three times. You can see how I switched my leverage there just to be thorough, just to make sure that my wrist stays in alignment. And all of these techniques can really be seen on our channel in much greater depth with better camera angles. I just like making the live videos because it's fun. And Cody's just selfish because he likes to be work done. <laughs> I was just about to say that. I know you are, which is why I stole that out of your mouth, because that's what I do. Two and three, just going through the toes. So I'm teaching at uh, Cortiva next weekend, which is a massage school locally in the area. And um, without a doubt, I've taught there three times before and it, it never ceases to amaze me how, you know, they'll be working and I'll, I'll steal words out or they'll, uh, they'll be working and I'll feel what they're working on and, you know, call them out on it from, a, from across the room and it freaks them out. and. Like, you, you just don't understand. Like, if you come and certify at the Institute, like, that's what you're getting. I know everything about you. <laughs> it's, uh, that's just my teaching style. So, it's... It makes it, it makes it more fun, too. It is so much more fun. Like, you have no idea how fun it can be when you're just all, like, linked in that way. And that's the, that's the family dynamic that we have at the Institute. Which, if you're not used to a workshop like that, it can definitely, uh, definitely be too cool. Oh. Thanks, Bev, from Canada. We appreciate you. Have fun at your grandson's baseball game. Mwah! I'm in the way. Sorry, guys. Two and three. Technically five, but who's counting? So just walking up those five vertical sections of the toe once each. And then accessing that get my thumb out of the way, get my big old thumb out of the way, down that lateral aspect of the proximal phalanx. We'll do it one more time. Excellente. Now we're on to dorsal aspect. Ooh, yeah, you're sweating up. Goodness. When we talk about advanced topic, warning, you may not understand this next section, so don't worry about it. Have questions, put it in the comments below. But uh, I'll see that a lot when clients come in and they're like, Sam, I have digestive issues, and we, we get into the reflexes, and their stomach is just hot and raw, and it's empty because they're not eating. Mm. And so they're, they're having all of this inflammation and these fire infections because the heat in the stomach is overproducing and it's not being given that denseness, that earth to balance it out. So it, uh, so it starts to wreak havoc, kind of like a brush fire in the body. 
And so the overheated stomach turns into an overheated lower GI as the acid passes, and it's just not not pretty. So that's that's something that I see a lot. So when you're when you're dealing with symptoms like restless leg and stuff, I mean eating and having something physical and grounding to let the body work on something, to let that heat go somewhere. I mean that's that's an excellent way to manage that symptom. Yeah, and then in advanced yoga practices, that is one of the most common recommendations for people experiencing uh, quote-unquote symptoms of energetic overload is to eat heavier, not unhealthy, but to eat heavier portions that are, uh, with more reoccurring you know, regularity. So, yeah, for me it's, it's helpful and I haven't eaten today, so Sam is perceiving the, the effects. So, um, a uh, friend and coworker messaged me th this morning about, uh, do you work with the uh, lymphatic system? Mm -hmm. how, how would you answer that? Because I, I kind of gave a general answer, but I'm curious what you would say. Because yeah. you just worked on the, 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 uh, the dorsal aspect right. of the foot. So. so, you know, in reflexology, there's the science and then there's the art. And that's actually the theme of the 2018 Reflexology of Association of America's convention is the art and science of reflexology. And so this, this idea that the, um, the body has a button that you press to stimulate a system is not the way that reflexology works. It's marketed that way, and the maps are kind of what I think is intentionally deceiving in that way. But the truth about reflexology is that there is no one button for one system. So as I'm walking the digestive reflexes, you may feel a pull in your lymphatic system. As I'm walking the respiratory reflexes, your low back might release. You know, there's no telling how your body has, in its infinite intelligence, stored its tension. Um, so when somebody says, you know, does reflexology work on the lymphatic system, I'll say yes, because reflexology touches on every system. But during a session, there's no way that I, as a reflex reflexologist, can target the lymphatic system, because that's not how it works. Your reflexology session may affect your lymphatic system if, if, that is where the issue is. Holding a nice point, got a little bit of a twitch. Um, but there's no way of, of knowing how the body is going to respond. I've had clients come in to see me multiple times, come in scenario, they come in for back pain, it's coming from the hips. And so they feel their hips release and their low back pain is gone. And it's because we deactivated the nerve chain uh, that is in the hips and holding that tension in the hips, which was affecting the low back, but the low back was actually not part of the equation. It was just the tip of the iceberg that the client was feeling, but not the cause. So that's really where reflexology has more of its art versus its science, is how it really affects the body. and switch hands, going vertical. One, two. And that heat that's building in Cody's tissues is making him more and more restless, as we can see from the toes that just can't calm down. So things it like- it feels good. Yeah, it feels good. But the things like that are really, really important to see during a session is, you know, if a client continues to be restless, why is that restlessness there? Like, why aren't they dropping into that state of relaxation? Why is their body choosing to, to be a little bit more agitating in its, in its balancing? I had a client the other day that just would not sit still on the table, and they reported feeling, you know, really, really relaxed, but 
their body just had so much going on that I said, you know what, I really think that we should take a break from the reflexology because obviously your body is just not loving it right now uh, for whatever reason. But that's a key identifier. You know, you want people to have that experience where they're actually in love with the process and that they don't feel like something is wrong. And that, that twitchiness, that constant restlessness, if it gets too much, it can definitely put a damper on anybody's session. And we go back to the toes. And taking away the hand just so that you all can see the walk. But it's really uncomfortable to do it one-handed, so definitely don't. Sorry, got to get leverage to get this last one. Okay, and lateral. One, two, really, really tiny. Three. Perfect. And on to the heel. And after we grease up the heel and get some good circulation, we're going to stop on our inside hands and use our fingers to curl into the reflexes at the base medial aspect of the heel, which are all those sacral reflexes. Three times, then switch hands. And now we're going to be walking into that lateral aspect of the calcaneus. And if the medial aspect represents that deep, deep, deep sacrum, here we're accessing all of the muscles of the glutes. So it's really beneficial to walk that outside lateral aspect for anybody suffering from things like sciatica. There are also a couple reproductive reflexes in here. So really, really important to make sure that you hit both sides evenly. So we hit this area next uh, on the opposite side so you can watch the replay later on YouTube. But we're really going to get deep into that lateral malleolus. So we're going to find posterior surface of the lateral malleolus, place our hands to use our leverage, and then we're going to press and roll out, press and roll out. And each time we press and roll out, we're going to shift our pressure down that little crescent and then reset. And there's a much better explanation of the technique on our YouTube channel that you can watch. But this is it in live real time. I normally get about four to five maybe presses and then we go into our dorsal lymphatic pump. Okay, cuboid notch. We got a little thing here, so we're just gonna walk that out. Just walk it out. Okay. And that's that. 
plantar surface of the calcaneus, lift it up so you all can see, horizontal three times, and we'll shift the thumbs width down, do another three times horizontal. Two, and three. Be careful with the heel. The heel is the last place that we walk in our routine for a reason. It's thick, it's hard, there are potentially a lot of sensitive spots in here. The callusing can make it really hard to walk, so make sure that all of your leverage is really, really on point. You know, walking extra passes is perfectly fine through here as well if you have somebody with a lot of denseness. Some heels are even like really seriously split, so being careful, you know, not to harm yourself during the process. Some heels are very aggressive, but at the same time, just really walking this tissue carefully as it can hold a lot of very sensitive nerve spots because it's related to that deep, deep, deep sciatic nerve. had a really cool series of sensations it was like you know how we've talked you and I have talked about how there's like the senses operate on a subtle level even smell yeah so I was smelling like it smelled like sounds funny but astral smoke mm. and like fire smoke and and then it, it kind of dissipated and then this like freshness came hmm. so I think it was like the top is cooling down a bit and kind of now I'm in this more uh, cooler state neat yeah so a lot of clients will they'll think they're crazy because they're like I'm smelling things I'm seeing things I'm hearing things I'm feeling things like during a session, when you play with the nervous system, you never know what's going to happen. The body is just trying to balance it, and it will often use the sensory system to convey that balance, whatever that means, but it's totally subjective to the individual. So as we go through the routine and we're kind of screwing with the nervous system, really, we're sending impulses that are then processed and registered by the rest of the body. I mean, those, those signals can be registered in a variety of different ways. Sometimes pain will turn on or up depending on, you know, how the body feels that pain needs to be processed. But what Cody was talking about specifically was his nervous system was registering a scent, two very specific scents, which conveyed to him kind of how he was processing the session. But for a client that's never experienced that, it might freak him out a little bit. So just knowing from a reflexology standpoint that nothing is not normal. Um, I think I said that right. <laughs> Everything is normal. Um, there, is no, there is no sensation or visualization or anything that is considered crazy or off the charts. It's just how your body is working with uh, your sensory system to process the work that's being done. That's it. Two and three. Okay, so let's wrap up the session literally with our hot towels. We'll make sure that I don't trip over any cords. Bam. Hot towels are hot. And see that steam? Love it. How did I just hold that towel? Because I'm awesome. AYP retreat this past month in France we were talking about quote-unquote self-inquiry and how you get in touch with your, your true self as mm -hmm. it were and there's different styles there's one that which is negation which is to say I am nothing I am the stillness I am the awareness mm -hmm. but then there's affirmation like I am awesome <laughs> you know I am this body I am this reflexologist so. mm -hmm. It just depends on which kind of mood you're in. But I like your, your style of affirmation. 
not my usual style. <laughs> but since Facebook Live videos are all about being in the spotlight, why not? Exactly. The uh, other Facebook Live video that we did with the other routine is up to 15,600. That's awesome. So it's crazy. Which is why we're doing this for you today. <laughs> because apparently you want it. <laughs> Sam does this really good, the drying aspect, and he was, again, helping me because I was having a tendency to make it more of an effleurage motion, but you want to focus more on literally kind of drying the nooks and crannies of the surface of the foot rather than trying to relax them per se. So. Yeah, because at the end of the day, the hot towels are hot because they're moist, and uh, if you have a foot that's not dry, it can cool down the client really, really fast and make them feel really, really uncomfortable. So even if you're just going over, like we said before, kind of going through the motions and you're not taking that extra time to feel for any wet spots that are left or make sure that, you know, you're getting into all the nooks and crannies, the client can kind of discredit you in their mind as far as, oh, they weren't really paying attention to me. So that's that's kind of where we where we go with that. But our last two points are the solar plexus and adrenal. We hold each of these for 30 seconds, just like we do at the very beginning. And here, at the end of a session, we really want to check for a change. You know, what do you notice as far as how the points responded? Did the texture change? Do you feel more of a pulse? Uh, or are they dead? Just kidding. Um, did you kill them, in fact? No. Um, but feeling for that palpable change, like how did your work affect them, really? No. Okay. Moving to the adrenal reflex right on the, the medial aspect of that big toe flexor tendon. It's a beautiful little ditch. Like, if I were to go inside the body to meditate anywhere, I'd probably go right here. Nice. Yeah. It's a nice little nook and cranny. Totally. Totally. Okay, there we go. That is a full 60 minute foot reflexology routine. That was actually technically a little bit less than that, uh, but you can always stretch it out. We just went really fast. I was talking a little bit. Cody's throwing up some gang signs over here. Um, definitely follow us on Facebook and YouTube if you haven't already, and we'll keep doing these live videos if you really want them. Uh, you skyrocketed our last video to over 15,000 views uh, in a couple weeks, so definitely let us know what you think. Let me know what techniques you want to learn more about. Uh, let me know what you want to talk about during the videos, because I always like to chat um, instead of just going through the routine, because the routine can be kind of boring. So we are out for now, but definitely let us know what you'd like us to focus on next time, and when you'd like to see a video so that I can catch more of you live, um, I'd really like to know that, because I'll schedule that for you. Uh, but we are out, and we will see you later.